Welcome to Everyday Economics, a podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, president of the 501c3 nonprofit Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics is a production of America's Talking Network. You can check out all of our great podcasts at americastalking.com. To support podcasts such as this one, please make your tax-deductible charitable contribution by clicking the link in the show description. We're recording this episode on Monday, November 14th. And joining me, as is almost always the case, is Dr. Orfe Devangi. He's a PhD economist. Dr. O, we're going to talk about the election Uh-oh. and what's, what elections do to economies, Uh-oh. but specifically this one. So before we even talk about the result, usually there's a ton of uncertainty before elections, right? Because the market's investors don't know what they're going to be dealing with. And so elections tend to create a ton of policy uncertainty, right? We don't know if it's going to be Democrats, Republicans, and their preferred policies. So when we don't know where things are going next, we tend to sit back, hide our money, and and wait. And so elections generally have this negative impact on investing activity. We're now, as we're recording this, we're almost a week beyond election day. We still have some races that are undecided because the results have not been tabulated. It's starting to look like the Democrats will hold serve in the Senate and perhaps even win the final race, which is going to be a a runoff between Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker in Georgia. That'll be coming up in less than 30 days. And in the House, it appears that the Republicans will take the house so we'll have a, you know a bit of a of a change there you'll have a president who's a democrat you'll have a senate that still has democrat tie breaking control at the very least and then you'll have a republican house so now as i said we're just a few days beyond the election the markets have been kind of strange not that the uh, market you as you and i've talked about many times the market is not the indicator of the health or the strength of the economy that's right what do you make of the market in the last week? And then I want I want you to answer the bigger question. What do you see for the economy in the near term, given the likely results from the 2022 midterms? So I don't think what we're seeing in the markets, in the stock markets, is really a byproduct of what happened with the election. I think it's mostly an overreaction to the inflation, headline inflation coming down a little bit last week. But, you know, generally, I just think the stock market participants tend to overreact one way or another to just about everything. Inflation coming down, barely coming down last week. Yes, it's good news, but prices are still very high. And that means consumers are still pinched to the max. And so a little decline in the pace of price increases just means that consumer demand is going to pull back by less than it would have had inflation kept rising very rapidly. It's a little bit of good news, but it's not such good news. The gap, the difference is not so big to justify the rally, the massive rally that we saw last week. And so same thing, you know, the election, you know, traditionally with elections, what happens after the election is that the stock market tends to prefer a split Congress because they feel like, you know, the Politicians can do as much, which means, you know, maybe less chances for policy and less policy uncertainty, less chances to do anything too bad that will scare or surprise investors. Right. That tends to be the case. And so with Democrats controlling everything right now, usually I would be a little bit worried because I would be like, well, you know, you know, if we get another crazy spending package, I mean, we saw what happened in the UK recently where, you know, You had a proposal that sent the markets tumbling. I would normally be very worried because I'd be like, you know what? You know, if the Democrats do anything too crazy right now, the markets will take a hit. But with inflation at 7.7%, I doubt we're going to see any kind of crazy tax and spending proposal anytime soon. I hope not anyway. We had inflation that was higher. I mean, we had a proposal run through with regard to student loan funding, which now appears to be in That's jeopardy. True. The policy decisions and the you know the actual uh, economic indicators don't seem to be necessarily yeah, coalesced. That's right. That's true. It is. It is a little bit crazy. It's a little bit scary. And I guess we're going to see. We're gonna, we're really going to see what happens next, right? I would hope that the common sense would prevail, and that you know, at seven point seven percent year over year price increases. Uh, 
we wouldn't see anything crazy coming out of Washington, D.C. So, so no, I, I, I'm hopeful, but you never know. Like you said, I, we did see a, a bunch of stimulus at the federal level, but even at the state levels, right? So like giving people vouchers and stuff like that is not necessarily what I would prescribe to deal with the current situation. Looking into the election as we were up until last Tuesday and trying to get an idea of what voters were thinking about and, and what were their motivations at the polls, uh, the economy, we, you know, we felt that that would be the foremost issue. And, we, you know, we're starting to see some post-election polling results where that was maybe only the economy was only important to about one third of voters, which I find to be absolutely fascinating. It's interesting you say that, actually. We, we kind of touched on that a little bit on the podcast where like the question we raised was, does the fact that people have jobs matter less than the price increases? You know, it seemed like everybody kept saying the economy is in the toilet because of the rapid price increases we're facing. I mean, for crying out loud, man, listen, price of eggs went up 43% year over year. That I mean, this four, four dollars a dozen in my local grocery. Oh, my Checked goodness, again this right? this weekend. Flour yeah. up twenty five percent. I mean, we feel the pinch. I think consumer confidence falling because we feel the pinch, and at the same time, people have jobs. What is it that Americans, you know, put more weight on? The fact that they have a job, or the fact that prices are increasing so rapidly that they can't save any money? And lo and behold, I mean, the economy only accounted for a third of how people felt going into the election is is very surprising to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've got uh, plenty of time to unpack the elections. Look, there's good news. Um, right? But before I, sure. before we go, there's the, the good news, in my opinion, is when you don't have a divided Congress, there is an opportunity to do the right thing. Right. This this country is still facing major challenges you know, on, on many, on so many fronts. And so there is an opportunity, Democrats in Congress have an opportunity to do the right thing. Now, whether or not they're going to seize that opportunity to move the country forward, that's another question. But they, they have an opportunity and they can't blame anybody else if at the end of their mandate, we haven't moved forward in a direction, right? So this, this country needs to get its act together to move forward, right? There needs to be a, a direction set for the country, and we need to stop with the back and forth, because it, unless we set an agenda for the country and go forward with it, we're going to be left behind. And I'm talking about so many things like infrastructure, for example. I mean, look, we have a crumbling infrastructure. We keep talking about spending billions and billions of dollars on infrastructure. But the bottom line is, if you compare America's infrastructure to the rest of the world, it's ter- it's in terrible shape. We have immigration issues. You know, before the election, we were seeing these migrants coming through the south border, being pushed around across the country. Massive immigration problem. We have so many issues that we need to deal with in this country that unless there's a, a united front and an agenda that we set to move forward as a country, and unless we come together and stop being so divided, we're never going to be able to to move forward. And so they have an opportunity. I hope that common sense will prevail in Washington, D.C., and that we'll see something positive at the end of that mandate. Otherwise, I think we're going to keep seeing the changes that we've seen recently, back, the back and forth in the division. Orphe, I appreciate your thoughts as always. For Orphe Devangi, this has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other quality podcasts at americastalking.com. dot